So hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for letting me present uh, Yeg Canvas. Yeg Canvas is a transitory art project that the Arts Council embarked on in partnership with Patterson Outdoor Advertising. Um, it's a citywide billboard exhibition and a six-month duration where the artworks were constantly changing. It was to feature the work of indigenous, culturally diverse, and emerging artists living in the Edmonton area. Oh, I've got a slide thing here, hang on. Um, these people that you see on this slide are most of the 32 artists that were selected for 45 images. And uh, we couldn't have had a more exciting, uh, more, uh, I, I just can't even explain the passion, excitement, and thrill for these artists who've never had their artworks for the most part exhibited anywhere to be out on billboards and LRT station posters. So here, there they are, kudos to our artists. Um, the program debuted on December the 8th, of 2015, and ran until May 31st of 2016. Um, okay. And basically what I'm showing you are a collage of images. The vertical ones are the LRT posters, and the horizontal ones are the 10 foot by 20 foot posters. Uh, sorry, billboards. Um, the goal of the transitory art program is to turn the city into a kind of a showcase or laboratory of public art, but at the same time for this project we wanted to give access to artists that normally don't have that background portfolio or access into public art, so how could we make it as simple as possible? We wanted to nurture these people and to give them a, 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 just an amazing exhibition. So it was developed, as I said, in partnership with Patterson Outdoor Ar Advertising with an overall budget of uh, $59,000. Patterson displayed space and provided all the printing and installations at cost. We, we were able to pay every artist um, an honorarium for each human selected. It's the reason why we, re we kept it to 45 because of the, the budget, uh, kind of the machinations of how that budget would work. The Grassroots Transitory Art Initiative invited artists and artisans working in a variety of contemporary and customary mediums to submit images of their work for inclusion in the rotating exhibit. This is Brandon Akinson's first public art display of one of his small hand-drawn artworks, which can be as small as uh, eight and a half by 10, and this one was blown up to 20 by, uh, 10 by 20 feet. He's an amazing artist. Um, in the submission process, we knew right away that our goal for an open accessible project was going to be reached as the hashtag title caught on very quickly and allowed an online conversation to begin as artists tweeted and post posted artworks they planned to submit. They shared information and tips and access support for writing their submission packages and they shared the call. So instead of being what might be a scary process, um, it was fun. It seemed to us, anyway, that it was fun and accessible. We did also go out into the community and workshops uh, to help the art and help the artists with their submission materials. We made those submissions as easy as possible. They could even send in the original artworks, which we would send back. Um, digital or paper was fine. So, the selection process. For the, this first iteration of Yeg Canvas, we had over uh, eight artists supplied nearly 40, sorry, 400 images. So many that as you can see, we needed to take a panoramic shot of the, shot of the selection committee room. In the end, those 400 artworks were selected down to 45 by 32 artists for display on 30 billboards and 15 LRT posters throughout the city. The selected artists included a number of culturally diverse and indigenous artists, post-secondary students, and a group of artists from the Nina Hagari Century for the Arts who have uh, either learning or physical disabilities. Only five of the selected artists had ever previously engaged with the EAC through other arts opportunities, and absolutely none had been involved with the public art. The selected images included um, caribou tufting, beadwork, leatherwork, insulation work, photography, drawings, and paintings. Um, we created a limited run of our Yeg Canvas images on trading cards. 
This was, you know, the old bubblegum cards or the old baseball cards. We, pr we produced enough of these that every artist could have an entire set of cards. We also have others that we hand out at various events. It's a playful and interactive element that um, at the launch, uh, everybody had a lot of fun with. They would either trade away ones that they didn't particularly like in order to gain some that they did, or they would trade to get more of their own images. <laughs> um, and really critical to the success of this, and I don't know if she's in the room, but Jessie Trudiak, who was the business, business systems analysis from Kelowna at last year's CMC uh, Summit in Kelowna. Anyways, anyone from Kelowna here? Um, she presented a technology in working with the ARC GIS platform uh, and made it seem how easy it could be to create a public art map or tour and she was going to share that technology with anybody who wanted it. So I said, well, why not? And I took it back to our communications team and I said, do you think you could turn the Yay, Con Yay Canvas show into an online gallery? And we did. Um, and it was you know, maybe not as easy as the tech made it out to be, but it was, <laughs> we did it, it was accessible. <laughs> so you can see that the billboard locations are noted in the map in red, those of you can see the slide, and the locations for the art on the LRT are purple, and then we have a storyboard underneath of every single one of the artworks. Um, and you can see uh, we have Lana Whiskey Jack's poster up, or billboard up there, so the title of the artist is visible as, the, as you click on one of those images and it comes up. So people really enjoy this mobile aspect of the piece and they could take it with them on the road to, um, to look for their artworks. And as the exhibition changed, so did the story map. The artist took selfies. <laughs> um, citizens shared photos. And, um, we shared these back with Patterson um, Outdoor Advertising, who said, please send us as many of these as you can. We want to send these to our branch managers. We know by what, looking at your show that we have to change how we do marketing on billboards. We have to be able to tell a story. We have to be able to engage the community. So I don't know, we're not planning to be going to the advertising business, but that was, <laughs> we're pretty happy with that, uh, that they were happy. And then social media, of course, um, the artists sharing their work on social media, EAC also shared the work on uh, social media and we received the highest views and shares and hits. I think the top Facebook book, book post was over 21,000 views. So more, me more media coverage, there was extensive media coverage for this, it was, the media just lapped it up, they came to the launch, um, they talked to the artists and you know these are these are people who've never shown anything anywhere for the most part. So there was, they were either intimidated or excited or got lost. You know, it was really pretty funny how the, how the attention and the, I guess the real honesty that came out for the artists to have their work and for the media to take uh, the time to talk to them and to show it across the television and radio was really heartwarming. And then, uh, Several artists also reported getting sales through the exhibition. The Nina Haggerty Center has been receiving more visits and inquiries about their artwork on display. And because there's been such an enthusiastic response, we did relaunch this uh, uh, program. And so in 2016, I think November the 1st, uh oh, that's soon, we will launch the next show. <laughs> Uh, this time we had 120 artists, or over, over 120 artists with over 500 images to select from. So we know that the popularity has grown and I hope we can do it another year. Thank you.